Welcome to the members and friends of Streetsville United Church and all who have joined us online for this time of worship today. We're glad that you have joined us. May God be with us and bless us during this time of worship. Today, near the end of our worship time, we will be sharing the sacrament of Holy Communion. And so I invite you to have on hand a small piece of bread and a bit of juice of any kind so that you can participate in this sacrament. I would like to read to you today from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. These are words that are often read. This is a passage which is often read on the Sunday after Easter. Let us hear the word of God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put the finger, put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the, although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to continue with an Easter theme today in our music. John Schillingberg, whom we thank for providing the music for these services, John will uh, play for us uh, the hymn called This is the Day That God Has Made. The words will appear on the screen and we invite you to join in singing.
My message today is entitled Ministry Behind Locked Doors. On the evening of Resurrection Day, the disciples met behind locked doors for fear of the religious authorities, the same authorities who had conspired with Pilate to put Jesus to death. We can understand their fear. They'd heard reports of Jesus' resurrection, but they hadn't yet seen the risen Lord, and they didn't grasp the implications of what they'd heard. They feared being put to death just as Jesus had been. So they huddled together in the upper room where they had shared the Last Supper with Jesus. But suddenly, even though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. John 20, verse 19. Yes, the crucified and now risen Christ was standing there with them, and he had come to minister to them. Is it true for us too? Yes, it is. Even behind locked doors, Christ comes and ministers to us. Isn't that our situation today? We are behind locked doors, partially from fear, of course, and also because we are obedient, law-abiding people. We want to do what is right. We want to protect ourselves and one another. Most of our normal activities are on hold. Even going outside for a walk these days takes some careful planning. We are suspicious of almost everyone and everything these days. And I know it's wise, but even the most introverted person is becoming restless. Like the disciples on resurrection night, we are huddled behind locked or tightly shut doors. Sometimes we are behind other kinds of locked doors as well. Fear has locked people in long before COVID-19 came along. Some of our fears are reasonable, but others loom large in our minds, perhaps too large. Sometimes we're fearful of the future, fearful of failure, fearful of death, maybe even fearful of our loving God who has acted to save us. And these fears can keep us locked in, making us afraid to venture forth and live the abundant life that God has planned for us. We can sometimes be hemmed in by the locked door of doubt. Thomas was behind such a door. Heavens, he wasn't even with the disciples on resurrection night, no doubt grieving deeply over Jesus' death alone somewhere. And he wouldn't believe them when they told him, we have seen the Lord. He said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Many people stand behind the locked door of doubt. They want to believe in God and in the risen Christ, but for some reason they just can't. They stand on the threshold of faith, but somehow they won't allow themselves to make the faith commitment. And honestly, crises like COVID-19 don't always help us to believe. In fact, they may even raise doubts about God in our minds. Some people stay behind the locked door of doubt because they demand more evidence, as Thomas did. Now, there's nothing wrong with asking for evidence. Christianity is a rational, well-thought-out faith, and it can provide 90% of the proof someone might ask for. But a commitment of faith always requires a small leap of faith. That's true about so many things in life. We may be quite sure, but never 100% sure before we make a commitment. Getting married, investing in a business, purchasing a home or a car, or even buying a pizza requires a leap of faith. It requires that you put your trust in someone. Now, good evidence can be given for the truth of the Christian faith and for Jesus' resurrection, but coming to a personal faith does require a person to push open the door a bit and venture forth. But some people remain behind that locked door of doubt, demanding of the Christian faith a level of proof that they don't require of other things. But as we've said, there are many ways we can be hemmed in by locked doors. When it was evening on that day, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear. 
But here's good news. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Even behind the locked doors, the risen Christ came and ministered to them. Locked doors could not keep him out. He showed them his hands and his side, and they rejoiced. They knew for sure now that he was risen and alive. And those words, peace be with you, were so important. It was Jesus' way of saying to them, you fell away and abandoned me, but all is well. You are forgiven. You are restored. I am your Savior, and you are my disciples. You are in God's grace and in God's love forever. So be at peace. A week later, the disciples were in the upper room again. Jesus' first appearance had certainly calmed their fears somewhat. This night, <clears throat> the doors were not locked. They were just shut. And so some progress had been made. And now Thomas was with them. Again, Jesus came to them behind those closed doors and stood among them. He turned to Thomas and gave him the evidence he, he demanded. And without even touching the wounds, Thomas made the great leap of faith and made the great confession, saying to Jesus, my Lord and my God. The risen Christ still ministers to his people. Even behind locked doors, Christ comes and ministers to us. Locked or closed doors are no hindrance to the crucified and risen one. Behind the locked door of doubt, he comes to dispel your doubts and to kindle true faith in you. If it's evidence you demand, he will lead you to that evidence. Christ comes with grace that is greater than our sins. Christ comes to give you courage which is greater than your fear. The one who died for our sins and rose again comes to cast out all our fears by his love, fear of God, of judgment, because Christ took our judgment upon himself. He takes away our fear of death. All fears are dispelled by his perfect love. Right now, you are likely in your home behind closed or locked doors, maybe alone or with your family. But Christ has come, and he is standing with you. He is saying, peace be with you. Despite all that is going on, things will be all right. God is with us in this struggle. My father is fighting against this evil COVID-19. And though the battle is hard, even for God, he will be victorious. My resurrection proves it. See the signs of God's mighty arm at work. See that many are recovering. Yes, many are sick and many have sadly died, but the numbers are less than the projections. See the advances in treatment. See how people are working together and caring for each other. God is helping you to do that. And remember, that God is giving eternal life to those who die in faith. For God is a God of resurrection power. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For to him, all are alive. So says our risen Lord as he ministers to us. Even behind locked doors, Christ comes and ministers, ministers to us. He is standing with you wherever you are today. Right now, he is speaking to your heart and mind. Peace be with you. Do not doubt, but believe. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he is present in this sacrament, which we will share in a few moments. Be open to receive the work that he is doing in you and with you and through you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, crucified yet risen and alive, we thank you for the great hope you give us, for your word of truth, and for your presence among us and your work in us. Scatter our fears and bring true faith alive in us. 
in these strange days of uncertainty, O oh God, open our eyes to the signs of your presence and your work in the world. Lift our spirits, and even in the darkness, let us see your light dawning for us and upon this world. We continue to pray for our leaders, for doctors, nurses, researchers, first responders, truck drivers, store clerks, utility workers, and all who are so vital to life during these days. Grant to them all perseverance, wisdom, and safety. Lord, even as we resist COVID-19, we know that you are with us, and you are resisting it too, working to overcome it and its dreadful effects. And until the time when life returns to normal, O oh God, keep our minds clear and our words encouraging and our actions loving and helpful. O oh Lord, by your Holy Spirit, prepare our hearts and minds now to be refreshed by your presence and your grace in this sacrament. We ask this in the name of the risen one who taught us to pray together in these words saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I invite all who profess him as Savior and Lord to receive this sacrament with reverence, faith, and thanksgiving. Eat and drink for your strengthening, that you may grow in grace and be blessed with all spiritual blessings, remembering that we, although many, are one body in Christ. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and after giving thanks to you, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and after giving thanks, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray. Gracious Father, by the death of your Son, you have destroyed the power of sin and death. And by raising him to life, you have given us life forevermore. So we praise you and honor your name forever and ever, O Lord. Recalling Christ's death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, O God, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. the body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. Jesus Christ, the bread of life, take and eat. Jesus Christ, the true vine, take and drink.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this sacrament by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and unite us in courage and peace and help us as we are enabled by your spirit to care for one another and this world that you love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. John Schillingberg will play one more great Easter hymn for us now, The Day of Resurrection. The words will appear on the screen. Please join in singing. Thank you for joining us today in worship. I would like to thank all those who have been faithfully remembering and supporting the church in these days. Your support is much appreciated. And if you would like to contact the church or make a donation, please do so through the information provided on the Streetsville United Church website. We look forward to being with you and worshiping with you again in this way next week. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.